Will there be paranormal investigators or maybe some unbounded urban chaos? Or will it stay completely true to the spirit of the games? Here's everything you need to know before you watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Five Nights at Freddy's is a popular horror video game franchise originally created by indie developer Scott Cawthon. The first edition was released in 2014, and its massive success led to multiple sequels, spin-offs, and fan mods. There's also been a series of books that expands on the franchise's deep lore. And after over a decade stuck in development hell, Blumhouse Productions will be releasing a big-budget feature film adaptation of FNAF in October 2023. The initial release was a first-person point-and-click horror game in which players take on the role of a security guard stuck in the rundown Chuck E. Cheese-inspired Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. During the first few nights, the player is given instructions by an unnamed predecessor who recounts the dangers of the gig, the creepy killer animatronics that stalk the restaurant at night. The player's only course of action is to close the doors when they're near, but they can't keep the door shut indefinitely because otherwise they lose power and become defenseless. The sequels expand on this simple premise, with different time periods, hidden minigames, and a Shakespearean familial drama that drives the whole plot. At this point, Five Nights at Freddy's might be one of the most recognizable horror franchises in the world. Most of its success can be attributed to the killer designs of the game's animatronic antagonists. But Scott Cawthon's greatest triumph probably would have never happened without his biggest failure. As it turns out, those frightening designs can be traced back to a very different, rather cutesy game. That free-to-play mobile game designed by Cawthon was called Chipper & Sons Lumber Co. It was meant to be fun and kid-friendly, but the character designs ended up being a little too scary when they were supposed to be endearing. Beforehand, Cawthon had been making wholesome Christian games, but the reception to Chipper & Sons Lumber Co. seemed to be what convinced him to pivot to horror. Five Nights at Freddy's was a hit pretty much right out the gate when the first game was released back in 2014. Plus, its lack of gore and campy comedic touches allowed it to be safe enough for younger audiences. So, Hollywood naturally saw dollar signs flashing, and attempts to make a film adaptation began in earnest back in 2015, just a year after the first game's release. Gil Kennan, who helmed the 2015 Poltergeist remake, was the first director attached, with Seth Graham Smith listed as a producer. Eventually, though, they both left the project due to constant delays on Scott Cawthon's part. Then, Blumhouse Productions bought the rights to the game and hired Chris Columbus to write and direct as he was apparently a big fan of the game. However, he too eventually left the project after many rewrites and do-overs of the film's script. Finally, Emma Tommy landed the director gig off the strength of her feature debut, 2018's The Wind. A film adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's will likely live or die by the quality of its monstrous animatronics. They must stay true to the spirit of the games, while also being believable as cute and cuddly mascots. And most important, they must be legitimately scary. That's no easy task. Luckily, the famous Jim Henson Creature Shop will be responsible for creating Freddy Fazbear and his friends in the movie. The Jim Henson Company should need no introduction, as they're the geniuses behind such classic media properties as The Muppets, Sesame Street, Labyrinth, and the 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So kudos to Blumhouse for not going the CGI route, and hopefully the rest of the film will be just as good as the character designs. Despite its humble beginnings, the Five Nights at Freddy's series actually features a surprisingly epic and dense lore that spans many decades. For instance, there's ample evidence that the first game is set in the mid-90s. This includes the date on a check of Friday, November 12th. That narrows it down to 1993, as that was the only time that that day, month, and date all coincided during the game's timeline. And the minimum wage on the check of $4 per hour fits that era as well. This could potentially indicate that the film will be a period piece. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is explicitly set in 1987. In the first teaser for the film, there's a screaming security guard who's presumably FNAF 2 protagonist Jeremy Fitzgerald. This potentially depicts the infamous Bite of 87 that's constantly mentioned throughout the series. Both trailers feature Matthew Lillard as Steve Raglan, a character who many fans are theorizing may be the series' antagonist William Afton, and Afton's post-modem form, Springtrap. If this is true, we could see Afton as a human in the flashbacks and Springtrap throughout the rest of the film. This would also mean that the film is merging game continuity, since Springtrap doesn't become a true antagonist until the third game. In the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, the security guard that the player controls is named Mike Schmidt, who will be played in the film by Josh Hutcherson. At the end of the first game, it's mentioned that Schmidt was fired for messing with the killer animatronics, and that's supposedly the last we ever hear of him. However, there's a popular fan theory that posits that Mike Schmidt and Michael Afton are actually the same person. 
In the games, Michael Afton is the son of deranged antagonist William Afton, aka Springtrap, and the protagonist of Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, in which he makes his first official appearance. The evidence for this theory mostly stems from ancillary material. For instance, the activity book Survival Logbook, which is made to look like an instruction manual for Freddy Fazbear Pizza security guards, is said to have been owned by Mike, with no last name provided. In the games, only Mike Schmidt is known to work at the restaurant, but the Survival Logbook also mentions events from the Sister Location game that only Michael Afton would know about. It seems possible that the movie will confirm, or debunk, this theory. Hi, this is Mike. Death and tragedy befalling innocent children is a common plot point in many popular horror franchises, and Five Nights at Freddy's certainly carries on that tradition. One such juvenile victim that gets particular attention in FNAF has been dubbed the Crying Child. He's the main character that you control in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, as his backstory is revealed through a series of minigames. According to lore, the crying child was bullied by his older brother at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and he was then bitten by an erratic Fazbear animatronic before dying. In a since-deleted Instagram post, the actor playing young Mike in the movie, Wyatt Parker, wrote, Nice to see my little brother again, over a picture of himself with fellow actor Lucas Grant. Many fans have theorized that the crying child is Michael Afton's little brother. And if Michael Schmidt and Michael Afton are indeed the same person, that means that Mike accidentally killing his brother could also be the tragic event that's the source of his guilt. Like a lot of horror game franchises, the various Five Nights at Freddy sequels usually follow different protagonists in each subsequent entry. So after Mike Schmidt in the original game, there's the ill-fated security guard Jeremy Fitzgerald in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and then the crying child in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. In 2019, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted was released, and it was eventually revealed that the game's protagonist was the female security guard Vanessa. She then becomes the antagonist in 2021's Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, having been corrupted by yet another incarnation of the evil William Afton. It's rumored that the police officer character of Vanessa in the movie is the same Vanessa from the games. If that's true, it remains to be seen if the movie Vanessa will share the same fate as her video game counterpart, or if the filmmakers will do something different with her, since she's already changed from a security guard to a police officer. The police searched Freddy's top to bottom. It's no secret that there have been a lot of terrible video game adaptations over the decades. From the live-action version of Super Mario Bros. to whatever the heck House of the Dead was supposed to be, video game movies have often been rightly maligned on plenty of occasions. A few years ago, Scott Cawthon spoke candidly on Reddit about the lengthy production process and constant delays plaguing the highly anticipated Five Nights at Freddy's movie adaptation. He also revealed the various script ideas that were pitched and then later rejected before landing on the final version that was used as the basis for the 2023 movie. Cawthon dubbed the first script that was written without his involvement the F script, whose synopsis was, A group of teenage troublemakers break into Freddy's. Chaos ensues. According to Cawthon, there was no mention of any main characters from the games, and it was too generic of a premise for a FNAF movie. It would have been yet another adaptation of a video game to add protagonists that weren't present in the original. Ultimately, Cawthon passed on that version. Five Nights at Freddy's has proven popular enough to inspire lines of toys, clothes, and even a long-running book series. One of those books is The Silver Eyes, which was co-written by Scott Cawthon himself. However, despite that creative input from the game's creator, The Silver Eyes doesn't follow the exact continuity of the games. It tells the story of the character Charlotte, who returns to her hometown years after a deadly tragedy involving Freddy Fazbear's. She meets up with her old friends, and they decide to visit Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Then, in classic horror story fashion, they're chased and almost killed by the possessed animatronics. The Silver Eyes may just be an ancillary tie-in book, but it was ultimately chosen by Cawthon as the spine of the eventual film adaptation. That's probably because it already had characters with emotional arcs, clear motivations, and enough dialogue to turn into a script. It might seem like it would have been an easier translation to the big screen, especially considering the fact that the games have mostly silent protagonists. However, as this was Cawthon's first attempt at screenwriting, the various early drafts weren't very good, even by his own admission. Paranormal TV shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures were a dime a dozen in the mid-2000s thanks to their low production costs and easy-to-produce spectacle. And apparently, there were plans to take the Five Nights at Freddy's movie in this direction. As Scott Cawthon revealed on Reddit, the story was about a group of amateur ghost trackers sneaking into an abandoned Freddy's. Who's in here with us? What the heck was that? Like the first attempt at adapting FNAF into a film, the Ghost Tracker version of the story focused on original characters instead of people from the games. 
It does at least sound like there was some sort of internal logic to this version, but it ultimately strayed too far from the game's lore. And Cawthon agreed, as he wrote on Reddit. Although a very common-sense setup for this sort of movie, the problem again arose about how to give these characters a connection to Freddy's itself. What ended up happening was too much of the story went to their own backstories and their own hardships, and it took the spotlight away from the story of Freddy's. There was yet another script treatment that was pitched for the movie before Scott Cawthon became officially involved. He described it on Reddit simply as the plushies take Manhattan screenplay. Not much is known about this version beyond the fact that Cawthon wasn't exactly happy with it. Apparently, the problem was the very premise itself, and the verdict was that it was, quote, burned with fire. If we had to speculate, this would have been the sort of movie in which monsters rampage through a city. Thus, it probably wouldn't have the same claustrophobic feel as the games, which is a huge part of their appeal. Large walking animatronics could potentially be scary in any situation, to be sure. But in an urban setting, it's theoretically much easier to run away and escape from the lumbering robots. On the other hand, being trapped in a rundown pizzeria makes escape much more difficult. Also, this type of narrative is a different type of horror than FNAF is known for. After all, Freddy Fazbear and his friends are mostly creepy rather than outright violent monsters who go out of their way to kill people left and right. All things considered, the death count in FNAF is relatively low. In fact, in most canonical endings, the protagonists are usually fired rather than killed. Ultimately, a script for the FNAF movie was finalized, and here's what we know about the plot. A down-on-his-luck regular guy named Mike is searching for a job. He ends up finding a seemingly easy one. Night security at defunct pizza party joint Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He's hired by a man named Steve Raglan who tells Mike that even though the restaurant has been closed for a while, the owner isn't quite ready to let go of it. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. Mike is late on his rent, so he ignores the job's warning signs and heads out for his first shift. He takes along his kid sister Abby, and we know right away from how cute she is and how much her big brother loves her that she will soon be in life-threatening danger. That danger arrives in the form of Freddy Fazbear's star attractions. They're a band of broken-down animal animatronics who once sang happy songs, but now they're instead motivated by a taste for the blood of children. If Mike can't figure out how to stop them, he might not survive his five nights at Freddy's, and neither will Abby. Scott Cawthon has long been vocal about ensuring that the movie will be something that the Five Nights at Freddy's fanbase will want to see. But who exactly is that fanbase? The FNAF games have a die-hard online following that mostly consists of men in their 20s and 30s. But anyone who's walked through any establishment that sells books has surely seen the withered faces of the Fazbear animatronics staring up from the kids section. Plus, the movie has a killer cast with an indie horror director at the helm, so it might just manage to appeal to viewers old, young, and new. Why do I always get the weirdos? There's a campy, heartfelt energy on display in the Five Nights at Freddy's trailers, as well as no shortage of jump scares. It looks like a delightful mix of the horror comedy of the Child's Play series, as well as the spooky lore of A Nightmare on Elm Street. There's also plenty of winking at the camera, as well as hints of an earnest redemption quest. Five Nights at Freddy's could also attract the family-friendly horror audience of something like Stranger Things. Or, conversely, its attempts to appeal to a larger group of horror fans beyond the gaming fanbase could lead to unmitigated disaster. Our prediction, and hope, is that it will land somewhere near Megan on the scary versus silly scale. In October 2022, it was announced that director Emma Tommy would take the helm of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And this is far from her first horror rodeo. She initially made a name for herself by co-directing 2014's Fair Chase, a documentary about extreme runners. She followed up with her feature directing debut, the 2018 horror western The Wind, and directed the thrilling fiction podcast The Left Right Game, which starred Tessa Thompson. Jason Blum, for one, has also been very complimentary of Tommy's cinematic skills. As he declared to The Hollywood Reporter in 2022, With Emma Tommy at the helm, we're committed to making Scott's vision of the movie come to life. Rest assured, it will be and is worth the wait. In addition to directing Five Nights at Freddy's, Tommy also co-wrote the script along with Scott Cawthon and fellow indie filmmaker Seth Cuttaback. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie has already lived and died many times on its path to the screen. Almost a decade will have passed since its initial announcement in 2015 and the actual release in 2023. The film has changed creative hands multiple times throughout that process. One of the directors who almost ended up getting the gig was Chris Columbus, but he didn't stick around. That loss might seem a little surprising, as the director behind Home Alone and the first two Harry Potter movies would seemingly have been a good fit for a PG-13 animatronic scarefest. It was back in 2018 that Deadline reported that Columbus had signed on to write and direct the FNAF movie. 
But then, in 2021, producer Jason Blum confirmed to Collider that Columbus had left the project. <laughs> Columbus hasn't said anything publicly about what went down, though Blum did tell Collider, I don't have the right to do anything Scott doesn't like. Basically, Scott has kind of like the equivalent of Final Cut, and it's taken longer than I hoped to get the right story. As detailed by Scott Cawthon's extensive list of gripes on Reddit in 2020, there have been plenty of scripts that he wasn't happy with over the course of production. Ultimately, he did like one script enough to co-write it himself. That would, of course, be the one for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie that's actually being released in October 2023. So, while Chris Columbus is no longer working on the FNAF flick, there's no need to fret about the status of his career. Looking ahead, he's one of the producers on Robert Eggers' upcoming Nosferatu, and he's also reportedly written a script for Gremlins 3. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie trailer features Matthew Lillard chewing the scenery as sniveling career counselor Steve Raglan. Steve may also be the not-so-secret serial killer William Afton, and he seemingly knows the sinister truth behind the demise of Freddy Fazbear's. It's obvious even from the preview that Lillard is making a real meal out of this role. This is a fine casting choice, as Lillard is no stranger to dangerous characters. His most iconic horror performance is Shirley Stu Mocker in the original Scream, and then he showed up in 2001's 13 Ghosts, a remake of the 1960 horror film of the same name. He can also hold it down in a cartoony franchise, as evidenced by his work as Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo movies, so clearly he's more than ready to spend every night that he needs to be able to survive Freddy's. With that in mind, Lillard casually dropped that he signed a three-picture deal for Five Nights at Freddy's during a January 2023 appearance on the podcast Weekly MTG. Time will tell if this ends up being just as legendary as some of his earlier roles, but our hopes are certainly high. These days, you gotta have a sequel! Five Nights at Freddy's won't be the first time that Josh Hutcherson is playing someone who works long hours somewhere sketchy. From 2017 to 2020, he played the main character of Josh on the Hulu comedy series Future Man. Josh is a janitor who beats an unbeatable video game and is then joined by the game's characters in a quest to truly change the future. Hutcherson is also, of course, well known for his time as Peter Malark in the Hunger Games franchise. Hutcherson's capacity for conveying heartache, comedy, and duplicity makes his casting as Mike Schmidt in FNAF particularly exciting. Even in the trailers, it's clear that he'll make viewers feel sympathetic to his plight. Hutcherson is also quite capable of playing to villainous and surprising strengths, like when he's charming the blue hair off of Stanley Tucci's Caesar Flickerman in The Hunger Games, or when he's making Katniss Everdeen question whether his love for her is real or all just a show for his own survival. He's sure to bring similar nail-biting acting abilities to Five Nights at Freddy's. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie also stars Elizabeth Lale as Vanessa, the seemingly sympathetic cop who introduces herself to Mike Schmidt on one rainy night. She, of course, spills the tea about the killer animatronics in their spine-tingling backstory. Viewers may recognize Lael from her roles as Anna on Once Upon a Time and as Mac in the 2022 movie Mac and Rita. She also played Guinevere Beck, the first object of Joe's obsession on the thriller series You. This might be a cynical take, but we're not exactly inclined to blindly trust the one person in town who seems to know everything about the ghost children operating the animatronics from beyond their graves. Even newcomers to Five Nights at Freddy's might smell a rat with all of Vanessa's seemingly helpful hints. So, is she Mike's friend or foe? Regardless of what we know from the games, the movie could go potentially in any diabolical direction, so we'll just have to wait and see. A big part of the success of Five Nights at Freddy's can be attributed to the spirited playthrough videos posted by the gaming community on YouTube and Twitch. So, it only makes sense then that the FNAF movie looked to this very community for some stunt casting. YouTube stars 8-Bit Ryan, Baz, Daco, Fusion Z Gamer, and Corey Kenshin pop up in the movie's trailer, and there might be even more in the whole thing. If you're a YouTuber yourself, these handles may very well have you amped out of your mind. But if, on the other hand, these names mean nothing to you, worry not. You can be excited instead about Matthew Lillard's presence, and explain who he is to the nearest youngster. How do you do, fellow kids? In 2021, Scott Cawthon stepped away from the Five Nights at Freddy's gaming franchise. This was seemingly due to controversy surrounding the public disclosure of his campaign donations to Republican politicians, including Donald Trump and Senator Mitch McConnell. This upset members of the LGBTQIA community, and Cawthon responded to the controversy by saying on Reddit, I'd like to think that the last seven years would have given me the benefit of the doubt in regards to how I try to treat people, but there I was, trending on Twitter for being a homophobe. If I get cancelled, then I get cancelled. If people think I'm doing more harm than good now, then maybe it's better that I get cancelled and retire. But Cawthon hasn't retired completely, as he released a new game in 2021, and he co-wrote the FNAF movie. 
Five Nights at Freddy's is inspired by the look and feel of a true-life terror, Charles Entertainment Cheese, aka Chuck E. Cheese. That place of business is, ostensibly, where a kid can be a kid. But it's also where kids can be scared of the giant creatures singing at them while they eat pizza and cake and play some skee-ball. The Family Entertainment Center delighted and haunted countless children celebrating their birthdays in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It still exists today, but in a much more stripped-down version. Unlike Freddy Fazbear's, Chuck E. Cheese never experienced any killer Bite of 83 scenario, even if the fanbase has tried to link some truly tragic events that happened at Chuck E. Cheese's into the lore of FNAF. In real life, Chuck E. Cheese did start phasing out its own animatronic band in 2017, just two years after the FNAF movie was first announced. Even if that decision wasn't officially related to Freddy's, the timing is still spooky enough to make you think twice about ever stepping into a Chuck E. Cheese ever again.